And we take you at your word. So, Lord, we're asking. You said your people will do greater things. And we believe it. We believe we will see miracles. We will see giants. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're going to do it like we do it in Echo on you service nights. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, give them a high five, give them a smile. If they don't smile back, why don't you pinch them, tickle them, make them feel welcome, make them smile tonight. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to every guest, every individual. We're glad that you are here tonight in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Just for a moment, I want to promote our Echo July events. If you guys could throw up that graphic. Awesome. All right. The ninth will be a lock-in at Bluff City. Okay. We're going to go hang out with the Bluff City's youth group. I believe they're called Apostolic Youth. From 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., they're asking that you all bring $5. Okay. That's going to cover pizza, drinks for the entire night. They have multiple games they're going to be doing. Okay. We are going to be meeting at the church at 645 and then taking the bus over there. And then Sunday, July 18th, we are calling this Echo Hangout, okay? This is going to be directly following the service. We're going to have basketball, volleyball, dodgeball, and then at 5 p.m. on July 18th, we're going to have a time of worship and word with you all students. We'd love to have you guys there. And then also, somebody say July 30th. Sections 3, 4, and 5, there will be an NAYC rally at West Point at 7 p.m. Okay, there will also be an aftershock. I believe they're having food trucks and uh, live concerts and all kinds of things. You guys don't want to miss out on that. Be looking at our student info page for more information on that. And then why don't we all stand tonight? And if you guys could throw up our missionary spotlight. I wonder if tonight we can pray over the Stricklands. I believe that God can move in a mighty way in their life and in their ministry and then where they are. Amen. Lord Jesus, we come before you today, mighty God. Lord, and we pray for the Stricklands, Lord, that you would strengthen them today, God. Lord, that you would go before them, Lord Jesus. Guide their footsteps, Lord God. Open doors, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit in Europe, in the Middle East, in Ireland today. Lord Jesus, we're believing you for an hour outpouring Jesus mighty things Lord in the name of Jesus I wonder if we can all worship with us tonight as we sing
entertain that presence tonight oh we worship you Jesus hallelujah 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah doesn't his presence feel awesome in this midweek service tonight amen 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 he is in this place tonight He's come to visit with us. I'm so thankful that he's here. Amen? Amen. And I'm thankful that you're here tonight on this midweek service. So good to see everyone. You may be seated tonight. So good to see all of our guests with us. Good to have. Why don't we give all of our guests a warm welcome? 
It's good to have Sister Beth Dillon with us and Sister Kayla Burns. I rehearsed that in my head many times because I wanted to call you Dillon there for a second. It's so good to have Sister Kayla Burns and that sweet grandbaby Burns tonight. Why don't we honor them? Amen. So good to have each and every one of you. I want to make mention of a few things that are going to be taking place here. Coming up this next week, is July 6th, Tuesday night, is our Tuesday night all-church prayer meeting. How many of you believe prayer is important? Amen. We want to invite you. Join with us next Tuesday night at 6 p.m. for all church prayer. And this coming Sunday is 4th of July. We're going to have a special 4th of July service here at 1030 this Sunday. And it's going to be very special in many ways in that we're going to be celebrating independence for a few moments. And we have asked one of our veterans from within this congregation to spend a few moments to talk about his view of freedom and what freedom means to him. And then we're going to go into a time of worship and word on Sunday morning. Invite someone and let's come together and not just celebrate natural independence, but spiritual independence. Amen. Amen. And then August the 1st, go ahead and mark it down in your calendars. We have special guest ministry, Brother Brian Parkey, Sister Parkey, and family are going to be with us in that service. It's going to be an incredible time together, and we're looking forward to it. In addition to this, while you have your calendars out, nobody has their calendars out, but in my mind, you've got your calendars out. Perhaps you're making mental notes, but July the 14th, July 21st and July 28th. Those are Wednesday nights. Uh, this month that we're going to have a very special series on signs and wonders, a special uh, summer series. I remember someone one time telling me, you get what you preach. Amen. And we are believing that we're going to have an outbreak of signs and wonders and miracles because we're going to be teaching and preaching it in Wednesday nights in July. And I want to invite you as we look forward to it join together with us in prayer over that time as we come together to talk and to preach to teach about that we're so blessed tonight to have special anointed talent with us and here in a few moments we've asked sister deb actually to minister in song with us and we're looking forward we're going to be blessed through the ministry of song as she sings a special song to us but tonight we're as equally honored to have men and women in this congregation who have served a lifetime, who have put their time in many, many years of blood, sweat, and tears into this place that we celebrate and worship every single week. And we're so honored to have our elders with us tonight. Why don't we just give all of those that are 55 and up our appreciation. We love you. We honor you. And we are so thankful that you're part of this. Tonight we get the special privilege of hearing from one of those men of God, one of those special individuals. And here in a moment, we're going to be hearing from Brother Morgan, who serves on our executive pastoral team. He's going to come and deliver the word to us. We're looking forward to hearing from this mighty man of God. Amen. We're going to be blessed. As the ushers are preparing to come and serve us in our time of stewardship, um, I do want to invite Sister... Um, am I going to see whenever you get up here, you're... you're mind goes blank. That's what I told you. Uh, but her, we, we want Sister Katie Weaver to come and share just a quick testimony. The Lord's been doing mighty things in her life, their life, and we want to hear about what God's done. Okay, I'm really nervous. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to testify about something that God did for us this week that was really awesome. Uh, a few weeks ago, a lady called us, called me, in the middle of the night with an issue and a need. And she was, she's older, and she was hot in her house. She had no air. She was crying. She didn't know what she was going to do. And luckily, we just had an air conditioner we just sprayed out, and it would have worked fine, you know. We were going to use it if we needed it. And it was sitting on the porch, and I was out there on the porch talking to her on the phone. And I was like, you know what? I can bring you this air conditioner we have. It's right here on the porch. I can just bring it to you. It was like 1.30 in the morning. And so I took it down to her house, 
And then yesterday or the day before, our big air conditioner went out. So we was like, oh, praise the Lord. Were we, <laughs> what are we going to do without that? Yeah, we didn't have money for that. And so we posted um, on Facebook and we had asked, you know, if anybody knew where any were cheap. And luckily, um, a friend from church gave us two. So I was just excited. And I told Ricky, like, look at how God multiplies what we give, right? <laughs> So the point is, if you have it and God tells you to give it, give it, give it, because he's going to give it back. Amen. Why don't we thank God for the blessings today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 As we prepare to sow in stewardship, why don't we go before the Lord right now over this time? God, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to give and to sow into your kingdom tonight. Lord, we pray blessings upon this congregation. Lord, use this offering to the furthering of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give. Please continue in worship tonight as Sister Ashley comes to minister in song.
name thank you Lord we praise your name we praise your name we praise your name hallelujah 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 thank you sister Ashley for that beautiful beautiful song tonight amen so that you're not standing too long I'll go ahead and refer you to our scripture text tonight Hebrews chapter 11 verses 13 through 16 Amen. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having been seen them, having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 14 For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Last verse, but now they desire a better country, that is an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I'd like to speak to us tonight on the subject, living the good life on the way to a better place. Anybody living the good life? Hallelujah. In case you're here and you don't know it, this is the good life. Living for Jesus, serving Him. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you tonight for your presence we feel. We ask for your help tonight to minister your word in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Live in the good life. Hallelujah. Well, I've debated on whether to start with this. First of all, let me th thank Brother Pastor Burns. It's an honor to stand here. Now, my wife tells me not to say this. But I'm going to say it anyway, and I'll just suffer the consequences later. I feel really rusty. <laughs> Brother Burns, I'm glad God's not rusty, though. Amen. Amen. He, he has his way of moving and working, don't he? Amen. Little, little reading I like, and some of you have heard this before. You've heard me read it before, but maybe not everyone. It's called drinking from my saucer. I've never made a fortune, 
and it's probably too late now, but I don't worry about that much. I'm happy anyhow. And as I go along life's way, I'm reaping better than I sowed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Anybody feel that way tonight? Amen. I haven't got a lot of riches, and sometimes the going's tough, but I've got loved ones around me, and that makes me rich enough. Amen. I thank God for his blessings and the mercies he's bestowed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup, it's overflowed. If God gives me strength and courage when the way grows steep and rough, I'll not ask for other blessings. I'm already blessed enough. And may I never be too busy to help others bear their loads, then I'll keep drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Amen. I don't know why I love that little, little reading, poem. Amen. But I guess it describes our life. It says a lot about us Pentecostals, apostolics, people that enjoy living for him, Brother Kevin, amen. Often I, I go around, well, I'm notorious <laughs> for going around singing. Amen. I, I keep practicing, thinking maybe one of these days I'll maybe be able to, you know. But, but I thought about that little song that we sang years and years ago, if there's anybody been around here as long as the early gateway days, like Sister Parkey and Beth was kind of young, and, but some others around here. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember that one? Yeah. Amen. Well, I think this is a life to be enjoyed. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, it's a good life. It's a good life living for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I know a lady that's here, and I can't call her name because I might get a bill in the mail. <laughs> that's the way things go around here, I think, from here. <laughs> but she used to sing that song. It's a good life living for the Lord. That's kind of the title of the song and the first line of the chorus. It's wonderful knowing that I have a reward. Well, it says it's wonderful knowing my reward. There's a reward coming at the end of this journey that you and I are living and we're loving it. Amen. I get so happy. I just can't hold back the joy. That's why those hands clap. That's why those hands go into the air. That's why those feet start running around and around this building sometimes uh, because the joy of the Lord is our strength uh, and it just can't be contained. We've got to let it out, as somebody said. It's a good life. It's a good life living for the Lord. I, I, I know that when I say God, living the good life, there's probably different thoughts that go through people's minds. We're so attached to this natural, physical world. Oh, we like our good things, don't we? We like the good life naturally, the natural good life. Some of us are inclined to like Nice things like, hmm, automobiles. Even, who does it? <laughs> Luxury. Automobiles, leather seats, tilt wheels and surround sound and windows and sunroofs and... Should I go on? Did I lose anybody yet? Anybody don't like any of that stuff? Amen. Well, when it don't work, you don't like it. 
Amen. Some of us even like the classics. I know somebody here that likes those classics, maybe two or three somebodies. Amen. They don't mind cranking the window. They don't mind letting down the window, and there's no air, and they just let the... Amen. Yeah. Who don't like... Well, the guys, they like bass boats. Those expensive rod and reels. I settle for Zebco most of the time. Amen. Walmart lures. I got some new ones the other day for my birthday. I don't think they're from Walmart. Boy, they ought to be good. Amen. We like those things. Vacations. Go to the mountains. Go to the coast. Take a cruise. Oh, man. That's the good life. That's the good life. Couldn't help but think about the ladies and their shoes and their purses. Anybody ever heard of Coach? I have. MK? Is there a Gucci? Is there a Gucci something another purse or something? I don't buy many purses. Can't find them to match my shoes, so, you know. These ladies like that stuff. The good life. A day at the spa, does that appeal to anybody? Some of these guys like the wind in their face on that Harley or that Honda. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, I rode a Honda one time, two weeks. Blew up the motor in my car. Guess what was my loner? Honda 300 Dream. <laughs> Couldn't believe the guy would trust me on it. I'd never rode one before. <laughs> Had fun. Enjoyed it. The, the good life. The good life. Hey, I could go on and on about that, that a little bit more, but let, let's, let's shift into something a little more serious. Amen. I thought about what Brother Breedlove said in his message it was a Sunday, wouldn't it? Oh, man, we've heard some good ones lately. My goodness. Handling life. Oh, that was a good Bible study or message, Brother Parks. Man, I wish I could remember it all. I got a little bit of it still yet. Amen. Brother Breedluff, he said, what's your favorite scripture? I had two or three come to my mind and one of them especially strong that always comes and boy he threw me off when he read his <laughs> but he made a good point I just can't remember what it is now <laughs> the one that came to my mind though and I can remember is John 10 and 10 and I think they might be able to put it up on the screen for us and it starts out the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy I don't like that part. You probably don't like it either. We really, really, the, the other part is our favorite part. Amen. Jesus, his words then continued and he said, I am come that they, I think that means everybody else besides him, that they might have life and that they, everybody else, that wanted it at least, might have it more abundantly. Amen. Oh, yes, I love that scripture because I like living, and I like living a good life. I don't want to live a bad amen, life. I, I don't want to be down and destitute and sad and troubled and all of that in this world. There's too much of that already. I, I want to have a good life living, amen, living for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you know, I, I believe he was talking as much about this life as he was even when the Bible talks about eternal life and everlasting life. I believe Jesus intends and desires for you and I to have a life now, amen, 2021, that's a life that we love living and we enjoy. Amen. Amen. 
Oh my, I got, uh, you may just have to stop me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about how he set me free. Anybody feel free tonight? Amen. Amen. You know why you, you love this life that you're living? Because there's a freedom. Man, because you've been set free from something. Because at one time you were bound. One time you were in sin. One time you were lost. One time I was in sin. One time I was lost. But Jesus came and he said, I want you to have life. And I want you to have it, Brother Kevin, more abundantly. Jimmy, I don't want you to live the way you used to live. I want you to live a different life. Hallelujah. I want you to be, amen, a different person hallelujah amen amen yeah amen it's a good life living for the Lord oh let me let me say something real quick before I go too far there might be somebody here that you don't really understand how can I apprehend how can I acquire how can I come by this life this guy's preaching about. I remember one preacher said one time, I think it was from this pulpit or that wooden one we had here for so many years. I like this one. I like that one too. <laughs> Amen. He said, I don't ever preach unless somewhere in my message I proclaim the plan of salvation. I don't ever preach, I don't want to preach unless I can inform somebody, maybe just by chance they're here tonight and they don't know that you ought to repent of your sins if you want to live the good life. You ought to know you ought to be baptized in water, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins so your sins can all be washed away so you can live the good life. You need to know that after you've been baptized in that watery grave and you come up, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost and you can speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And then, my friend, you'll be living the good life. Hallelujah. Yes. That's how we all got here. That's all how we all got to this place is we obeyed the gospel. Amen. 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 I'm just filling in so many things I need to skip some stuff. Talking about the good life as far as this life is concerned, again, we like the good things. I believe, God, I believe God wanted us to have good things. I believe he wanted us to have natural blessings. I don't remember, Brother Burns probably knows the scripture, he's good at that. Brethren, I pray that your soul, that you prosper even as your soul prospereth. Something like that. You know where that is? Who wrote that? Peter, John? Peter, James, John, Paul, one of those guys. First John, okay, first John. We don't want to be, that's okay, that's okay. Get it right, tell me in a minute. Amen. You know, I believe God made a deal with people that would live for him and obey him. Way back in the book of Malachi. Now, I can preach about tithe because I'm not the pastor and I don't get your tithe. And I've said this before. I'm old enough that I can say about anything I want to anymore and get away with it. <laughs> Timmy, you can't do that. I can't. God said in the Old Testament through Malachi, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is a church. If you have anything, you owe a tithe. A tithe is a tenth. Amen. 
And he said other things about the offerings. I, I want to get to this part. He said, and if you'll do this, if you'll obey me, I'm going to pour out upon you a blessing. The windows of heaven are going to be open, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to pour out a blessing that you will not even be able to contain it. I believe that's the deal God made with the people that would hear his voice, that would obey his word, that would do what he said to do, and you just can't help that if you live for him and obey him, you are going to be blessed. My message tonight is you're going to be living the good life. Amen. It's not going to be like it used to be. Amen. It, it, you're going to be blessed above measure. That's God's promise. Oh my, that's something to preach about. Hallelujah. Anyway, thinking about the natural things. I always remember this story that brother, that was, I guess was told about brother A.D. Urshan, not Nathaniel Urshan, but his dad, A.D. Urshan. He was from the old country of Iran or per Persia, it's now Iran. He spoke with an accent, and I'm not good at imitating accents, so don't expect me to do that. But I remember the story about him and a, long, a young preacher or evangelist, it may have been, that uh, he had recently gotten a different vehicle, automobile, car. Up in New York, they say car. That's probably what they say up there in West Vir or Virginia. No, you don't say car, okay. Anyway, this young preacher was saying to Brother Urshan, he said, Brother Urshan, Brother Urshan, I love my car. I just love my car. I love my car. Brother Urshan and his kind of broken English, whatever, like I said, he said, no, no, no. You do not love your car. You like your car. You love Jesus. You know that's the way it ought to be? Amen. We don't need to get too attached to the things of this life and this world because actually this good life that we're living, we're looking for a better place. As good as this is. Amen. As, as blessed as we are. Amen. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Nobody else probably does this. But I, once in a while, I look in the mirror. Anybody else ever do that? Sure you do. Every day, probably several times a day. But you ever look in the mirror and look at yourself and say, why was I born here in this great country? Oh, I'm glad we're going to hear from somebody about freedom and all that before long. Independence Day. I don't know who it is. I think I know, but I don't know. Amen. What, you know, what if I'd have been born somewhere else? Why did God allow me to be born in the United States of America? Yay! Wish I had a flag. May it wave all the brave. Yes. But why did God let me be born here? Why, what, what would it be like if I had been born in a third world country? You ever think about it? Probably. Probably not much different than me. But then I look in that same mirror and I say, what if I had not heard what if I had not heard 
the name Jesus. What, what if I hadn't ever heard the full gospel that you and I have been so, so blessed? I don't guess there's any other word. Maybe there is. Hey, I wasn't born in this thing. I, I'm, like, I'm like some of you. I came in later. Oh, my, that, that I, I, well, I can't remember now if it's Brother Breedlove or who, but talking about God's plan, maybe it's pastor. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. The plan that God has for every one of our lives and how he works everything around. So it's amazing when you look back and, and you see, yeah, there's a song that says, when I look back and I see where he brought me from, it's such a mighty long way, not from where I was, amen, or not where I am, but from where I could have been. I don't know where I would have been if it had not been for the Lord. Uh, I don't like to talk about myself when I preach, but oh my, God's so good. God's so good. God's so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. thought about the Apostle Paul, and I had some scripture. I'm not going to take time to go there. I, I'm using up my time. Uh, he talked about in, in one place he mentioned in, in Galatians that he said, the life I now live. He acknowledged his life before. He, he told us about it in, in the things that he wrote. You know, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I was this, I was that. Raised in this city in, at the feet of Gamaliel, a scholar. Paul was probably a member of the 70 seat Sanhedrin of Israel. He, he was a, 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 a brilliant man and person after the law. He said, but the, net, the, work, the life I now live. I want to tell you that that man named Saul of Tarsus began one day on the road to Damascus a different life. He began a different journey. Amen. He was headed, yes, he was on the road to Damascus. He had letters in his hands, Brother Burns, to take to the synagogues and to, and to arrest those and take those in bonds back to Jerusalem that was the followers of the way. In other words, they believed in Christ. But when Jesus appeared to him and, and he spoke his name, Saul Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And they had that little conversation and, and the apostle Paul was made blind because of the brightness of the light. And after a while he arose and let me tell you something, he was on the same road to Damascus. But I want to also tell you something else, his destination was different. Amen. He wasn't going to the same place that he was going just a few moments before when the light shined out and the Lord began to talk to him and to say to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And so he got up. Amen. And he started on down the road to Damascus. But it wasn't the synagogue that he had in his mind. I just thought about it this way. With us modern type folks, God would say, hey, I got an idea. Why don't you reprogram the destination on your GPS? You got it in there right now as the synagogues. That little, what do you call that little button you hit on there to, to delete that? Delete that destination, brother Justin. I don't want you to go to the synagogue. Amen. I want you to go to the street called Straight. 
Amen. There's something waiting, somebody waiting for you. They're going to come and see you there. Amen. So, you know what we do when God deals with us? We start readjusting, amen, things on that spiritual GPS. And we, we delete where we was going. And we put in a new destination. And we, put, we put, put, pull up that old, what is it, QWERTY keyboard. And we start putting in H E. A V E does spell it right N we start putting in heaven and then we see that little thing down there that says go brother Kevin and we go and we get on our road we get on a traveling we get on a, a life a good life living for the Lord and, and we're not going just all oh, we may come to church and we may enjoy the presence of the Lord we may sit together in heavenly places but our ultimate goal and destination is a place that he's gone away to prepare for us and he said if I go away I'm going to come again and I'm going to receive you unto myself that where there I am, you may be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Living the good life. Going to a better place. I'm glad I'm on the journey, aren't you? Amen. That's not all I have, but I'm done. Amen. Amen. Living the good life. Hey, if you wouldn't at that Sunday school picnic, and I know some people couldn't be there, we had a good time. Amen. Brother Arvel and I won both games of horseshoes. And it was fun. It was hot, too. Amen. But you know what? One of the best things about living for him is being with you. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the way you get into this family is to get born into it. Refer back to repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, start living the good life. God bless you. told Brother Burns, leaned over to him, and I said, you know, when you start this good life, you know, God gives you some used things. No, he doesn't give you some used things. The Bible said, if any man is in Christ, old things are passed away. He said, and all things are become brand new. When we start the good life, God says, I'm going to give you brand new stuff. Anybody like new stuff? Hallelujah. Whenever you come into the kingdom of God, God gives you brand new stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Brother Morgan mentioned a GPS. What I usually hear out of a GPS most of the time is recalculating. 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 You know what? If the Holy Ghost says recalculating in your life, you better listen. Amen. Because when the GPS says recalculating, that means you're going the wrong direction and you've got to make a turn somewhere. You've got to change directions. Folks, we need to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. If he says recalculate, we need to stop and say, God, which way do I need to go? And we need to make the right turnaround, hallelujah, and get back on the right course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because with us, anybody know what GPS stands for? I heard it over here somewhere. Global Positioning service but our gps is god positioning service hallelujah we're listening 
to God. Hallelujah. We're listening to our Lord. Amen. As he directs our life. Let's stand tonight. We want to go to the Lord in prayer just for a couple of needs real quickly. Sister Pat Dillon is very sick and is in need of prayer tonight. We want to lift her up before the Lord. Also tonight, be in prayer for the Mosier and the Woolham family. That is uh, Sister Barb, Sister Beverly, and Sister Brenda Mosier. They lost an aunt today, Thelma Woolham. Be in prayer for them. Amen. And for that Woolham family that the Lord will touch and minister to their needs. How many's got a need tonight? Amen. You know what? Another one of the good things about the good life is that we've got somebody that we can go to. Hallelujah. In a world where we live where a lot of people feel so alone, when you're not in the good life, a lot of times you feel so alone. But when you're in the church and you're living the good life, you got somebody, amen, that's right there. Lo, I am with you always. Hallelujah. Sister Connor, I'll never forget when I lost my dad. And I got a phone call that next morning from Sister Velma Connor. And she said, Brother Johnny, you've got a comforter. And I felt such a strength, Sister Connor, when you spoke those words that next morning after I'd lost my father. We've got somebody tonight, hallelujah, living the good life that's with us all the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and let's go to him right now in prayer and let's ask him to touch the needs that we have tonight in this place. Lord, we love you tonight. God, we're so thankful for your blessings and your goodness, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, touch the needs tonight, Lord. I pray for Sister Pat Dillon, Lord. God, I pray for healing, Lord, for your touch of, of help and strength and healing in her life right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do the work there, Lord. Do the work in Jesus' name. God, we pray for this loss, Lord in the Woolham family, God, that you're going to touch and strengthen the family. God, that you're going to comfort and help them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. I want us just as close as we come around the front, we're going to sing a chorus. We're going to take a little bit of time. And you know what I like to do whenever something good happens? I like to celebrate. Amen. What would you do if you got a big check in the mail tomorrow for about four or five million dollars first thing I do somebody had to pick me up off the floor and then I'd celebrate but you know what when something good happens I like to celebrate hallelujah hallelujah and tonight we're going to celebrate the good life living for the Lord let's sing a little bit and let's worship a little bit as we celebrate the good life hallelujah Today who looks so down and out And I know it cause I've been that way before But I found peace and happiness I could afford Ain't that good life living for the Lord Well it's a good life living for the Lord And it's so wonderful to know my reward And every day to love I can enjoy is a good life of living for the Lord. Anybody ever have a bad hair day? I don't have too many of them anymore that's getting 
less and less all the time. But sometimes we have a bad hair day, so to speak. Even in the kingdom of God, anybody ever have a bad day? Even living for the Lord? But I can declare this today. My worst day living for the Lord is better than my best day when I was living in the world. Hallelujah. Folks, it's not just a good life living for the Lord, but it's the best life living for the Lord. Let's sing it one more time as you're dismissed. In Jesus' name, go with the Lord and stay in the best life. So glad to be a living, a good life living for the Lord. Somebody behind me said, that's all, folks. Amen. Why don't we thank him one more time? Hallelujah. We give you glory today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So good to have seen everyone in the house of the Lord. Didn't we have a wonderful time at the picnic this last Sunday? Amen. It was an awesome time. Why don't we just show our appreciation to Brother Travis, Sister Miranda Huddleston for all of their investment. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you tonight. So good to have seen everyone in the house of the Lord. Greet someone tonight as you're dismissed. <laughs>